Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. All right, Yevin, nice job. Uh, don't worry, I, I didn't see nine minutes in. I just, I clicked a bit in just to see what kind of video it is. Later on. And I'm ready. I'm excited. Let's go. Hi, guys. Hope you're all doing well. My name's Connor. Hi. I like to learn. I love castles. Castle time. Exciting. My favorite time. I'm going to give it a preemptive subscribe. That's rare. Preemptive like. Secrets of a Medieval Castle. Che uh, Chepstow, 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 Chepstow Castle. Chepstow. Original link to the video. Top of the description right below that. Link to the Discord. Would love to have you. Just click on the link. It'll send you right over. Let's go. Phone's away. Even if you're watching on one. Toss it. That, that can't be that's got to be new so the the rough roof hi my name's kevin hicks welcome to my hi. youtube channel the history squad we're on a day out today because we're right on the borders of england across the river and wales over this side we are he's a veteran visiting my favorite castle of all times chepstow castle and you can see it just behind me okay so guys, I'm right here. I, I'm, I know I'm right because you guys answered it before. No, I'm not. One of you guys said they were to shoot arrows out of. I'm not talking about like these things here, these slits. Um, I, I mean these pegs in the wall. You can see where I'm, I'm pointing. Um, they're, they're where the scaffolding was put in, right? And that's how like they, they kept building up and up. Like they'd build and then they'd, they'd put a, um, some wooden scaffolding and then they'd put more bricks on that. And then they go up and just repeat the process, right? And these little, like, cross, they're for arrows? So, we're at the entrance to the castle, there's a gatehouse, but there's a bit missing. Now, keep focused. Oh god, that's hard for me. Gate. Gate. Rubble. Something's missing here. Yes. If you follow the foundations, it comes to here, goes all the way across here, and somewhere along here, or hanging out over the mighty cliff, there was a platform and a door, and you had to come with your wagon and have a tight turn to get in. Now, and you hanging out, and somewhere along here, or hanging out over the mighty cliff there was a platform and a door and you had to come with your wagon and have a tight turn to get in now this is a design i understand from the middle east so crusaders who came back they came back with knowledge but people get things wrong about this castle we're going to have a closer look at what will stop you getting in come and have a look the top of the castle here were machicolations wooden roofed hoardings those kind of things where you could um, drop things down on the enemy you could shoot oh, right. them right there that's genius is that what this is this opening that's amazing i don't think i've seen that on the castles yet so you could just be up here and just pouring stuff down that but then if you come a little bit further, the murder holes, right at the top here, the stone murder holes. Okay. Yeah, but people think that these two holes here were murder holes. Yeah, I was just about to say, yeah. Uh... But they're not. What the two holes were for were great big stone counterweights because Chepstow Castle had two giant portcullis he didn't have yeah the reason i i didn't think he was talking about the two up there is because i mean just think about it i mean the this is perfect um but with these all you have to do as the uh invading the um besieger is just not not stand under these two holes so like obviously that yeah here were murder holes 
but they're not. What the two holes were for were great big stone counterweights because Chepstow Castle had two giant portcullis. It didn't have a moat around it. It had a ditch around it, but not a moat because the water would just flow down the cliff next to us into the River Wye. But I've got permission to close these doors. So just wait there a moment. I have another question. I'm gonna borrow there. the key. I promise I won't ask questions for like the next 10 minutes. Just let me ask one more. Flow. Just wait. If next. Why? So when I'm like a kid, I'm like, oh yeah, those could impale people. But obviously that's not what they're for. It's to like lock them. But why make a, 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 a arrowhead like upside down pyramid? Wouldn't it be stronger if you just kept them rectangular? Um... So that, like, couldn't, like, these tips be more easily broken when they're, like, locked in? You know? Or, or I, I, won't, I won't pause next. for the next moment. Can I borrow the key? Okay. Can I close one of the doors? Okay. He's so excited. I love it. So these castle doors have been remade by the British Army in the 60s. The originals are still in the castle, but have a look, the outside of these doors. It's a real key. That's shot in iron. So you have a massive portcullis in front of you, doors shot in iron, but come behind them and have a look at the construction. I love these doors. These gates, replicas of the originals were made and erected by apprentices of the arm. Yeah, he just said that. How about that for a set of doors? Amazing. And this is the door key. Isn't that great? And there you can yeah. see the portcullis behind. Only, and they the only, still work the only, behind. The only, oh, well, actually, that was a better image. The only thing is... Okay, so... You lock it with these two, but you'd think it'd be like a much wider... Um bracing because I, I feel like it'd be harder to break through. I said I wasn't. And they still work. Come and have a look at these. These are called put lugs. And if I show you behind the other door quickly, the put lugs here went all the way into the guard room. So they just shoved them all the way through that hole behind the doors and then sealed them. And when that the portcullis was down here, you can only open the door so far anyhow. Oh, gosh. But on a daily basis, these doors were kept shut. They used to have a smaller door in them. That was the wicket gate. But I'll show you an original in a bit. So all this is open now. It used to be inside a building. The remains of it are here, a guard room. And if you look up, you can see where the portcullis went the fireplace for one of the upper stories. And just here, you can see where the archway used to go across. So there used to be a floor, like was that, were those floor beams right here? So much of the castle missing, but so much of it is still here. The wooden part? Let's have a little look in the shop, shall we? So just as you come into the shop part of the castle, right? There's actually a little turning here. This used to be a garderobe here, a toilet that emptied straight out into the river. I was like, uh, but like for back then, yeah. This, people call this the dungeon. We don't know for sure. And there are a few clues as to, hmm, what must it have been? The floor's changed because here, if you look around, over there, there is a beam. I was going to guess, was it an old circular wooden staircase that just isn't there anymore because it's made out of wood? A put lug, as they call it. Put a lug, put a lug. That comes across here to there. So either you had to stoop down, the floor was lower. So, or was it just half a shelf for sleeping? 
and then the rest of it was storage. Also here, this is actually a chimney. This is a stone fireplace just here. And you can see this goes all the way up to the top of the castle. So a lot of people say, oh, the dungeon. I actually, all right, yeah, maybe a prison. All right, yeah. Temporary prison. I like this guy. Or was it a storeroom? Was it part of the guard room? Were weapons kept in here? Whichever it was, it's a, it's a great little room. And I've made many a heart leap in here by telling a ghost story or two. What about like a servant's quarters? But we're going to move through now. Let's go and have a look at the kitchens. That grass. So nice. So here we are in the kitchen. And you've got evidence here of where they used to have the big pottage bowls. But this room has changed so much. If you look up there, you can see there's an original archway that's been blocked up because we're actually in the cellar part. The main kitchens were also upstairs as well, but it's changed so much over the centuries that uh, it became an enormous affair. But my favorite part of this, follow me. This is the very spot where the last person to be killed in action was killed here during the attack 25th of May, 1648. It was a royalist officer apparently, and it was a sword fight against one of the parliamentarian officers, and he died on this very spot. These little bits of history that I've learned over the decades, they're a treasure. But we're gonna have a look in here, come follow me. So this, this is all part of the kitchen, yeah? You've got cupboards here built into the walls. In this little room here, Guys, it sort of, he sort of looks like my grandfather. I... This is a full garderobe. This is where you could sit and take what we call a tontiti. This is the bathroom, the toilet. And if you look down, you can see where your sewage, your poop, your whatever, would actually fall straight into the river Y. And it was also a place where you put your clothing to hang. These were not rough rooms. They were plastered, painted white. There were- Oh my God, I've, I, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself. And these are also used for your clothes to hang. Like I, like I thought like you use these to sit on to do your business and you use them to hang clothes on. But... And it was also a place where you put your clothing to hang. These were not rough rooms. They were plastered, painted white. There were hangers and things. And the breeze would actually dry clothing. And it would also, with the smell of urine, so I understand, kill the fleas that live on your clothes. But during a siege, an attack, put a lid over this, lock it so nobody can get up. And also you have a firing position or a shooting position, either for musket or crossbow. And if you look through one of these windows, you can see across the River Wye into England. Let them come up that way if they want. Just everyone relieve yourself there. And <laughs> So we're going to get down into the cellars. You have to be careful because I want Julie to focus on an extra piece here. So if you follow me to the edge of the steps, let's have a look up. The roofing here, it's extremely rare to see this combination of roofing. This holds up an entire great hall. But now let's step outside. I wonder when humans figured out like, oh, an arch, that holds a lot of weight. We should use that in buildings. Like I, that, such a simple yet um, important, Im you know, improvement, discovery, whatever you want to call it. Now look at this for a view. This is how the castle controlled the traffic going up and down the River Wye. Not just from the battlements, but from this the position field. here. Bowmen, crossbowmen, gunners later on can sink any ship that tried to sneak by. And it's a fascinating thing because I asked the question, all right, you've got a, a cog like my world famous Thomas. 
he sails up there, uh, but he has to turn around. How do they do it? And this is another learning curve for Kev. They would sail in on high tide, anchor, boats would be rowed out from underneath the castle. Have a look at this. Have a look down there, all the way down. Right at the bottom there, there is an inlet under the castle, which was where they kept the castle boats. Oh, I thought so the ship would drop passage. anchor. Boats would row out, fill up with supplies, come all the way back in. Then there was a great big jib overhanging the castle up here Holy. that lowered down the nets. And then men running in great big wheels would hoist it all the way back up, either to the wine cellar down below, the food cellar, which we're going to have a look in a minute. But it's how the ship turned around that gets me. So it would wait. High tide, it's coming. Then the tide goes down. And as the tide goes out, they lift the fore anchor and the actual tide turns the ship around. And then they simply get swept out to sea. People are so smart. Wow. Yeah, some of the things I'm learning. Question, um, before I forget. Was there ever a point in history where the crossbow completely replaced um, the, the bow, like the bow and arrow? Like, like you know, I, I know there are a lot of battles where like long bows and crossbows were used because sometimes like one was better in certain circumstances. But I know like by the time firearms um, replaced bows and arrows and and crossbows was there ever a period in time in in, in uh, european history where like they they perfected the crossbow to where like it was better than a normal like long bow or concurve bow and in, in, in all circumstances you, anyone know let's go down into the cellars it's quite interesting so here we are in the cellars you have the echo yeah this is where the food was stored originally of course they were all plastered nice and clean there were wooden beams across to hang like smoked ham and things. But this room, people, once again, they miss a lot. Come over here and have a look at this. They what a lot? What so this is a working room. But look at the finial here. This 800 years. Look at the shape of it now. Pretty pristine. All of this. And if you follow this all the way up to the cross part. That's beautiful. I always ask the question, how did they build it? I always ask the question. Anyone who's ever kind of, you know, worked in any sort of, you know, construction job or like helping your fan like if you're doing remodeling of a house or helping your um just just seeing how how well these line up when they come together is amazing just how perfect that intersection is of of beams i like i i i a lot of things I, I kind of learn about, or thing preconceptions I have. I, I people were just as smart a thousand, two thousand years ago, I think, as they are now. It's just the knowledge that has been built on top of what is it? You know, stuff built on shoulders of giant, like that has been built, and the technology we've gotten over time that we have now, and all of the knowledge we have. Yeah, that that's obviously makes us more capable and, and knowledgeable. But in terms of just intelligence, I don't think that they were any... And, and it's something that I, I guess I sort of thought before, but it amazes me how smart people are, just humans are. I always ask the question, how did they build it? Well, this was built when the castle had no top to this part. The great hall is above us. So this is an open space. It's also a canyon where a river tribute comes, a tributary of the river comes underneath the castle. So they built a massive bridge, a stone bridge across it. Then they put this floor. 
Then they build the walls. Then they built all of the arches. But I asked the question, how'd they keep the arches up there? And what I was told blew my mind. So you get up to here, no problems. These go back into the wall almost a meter. But just before he says it, I mean, just as you set the first blocks in that aren't attached to the wall directly, do you just have to like hold them in place until the concrete or whatever sealant they have hardens and then go up? But that seems like it wouldn't be very sturdy. But it's when you get a little bit higher. That's tricky. The stonemason set the stone, but they'd filled the room with soil. They're actually standing up there. When they get to the very top, they are poking up out of the top and they simply left it to dry. Then, manpower not being a problem, they took all of the soil out and you had all of these ribs and arches and then they infilled them from the top mm. and then poured concrete, would you believe? So smart. That's why I get so upset whenever I see shows on the History Channel. It's called the History Channel, and they have more shows about Bigfoot and ancient aliens than about history. Maybe, like, once a year on, like, D-Day, they'll have a D-Day special or, or something like that. Like, but, like, when people say, oh, how could they have built Stonehenge? How could they have built the pyramids? Aliens. It had to have been aliens. How, we can't even do it today. And it's just like, when, when you don't, if we didn't have... The technology today, or then we, you, you, when you have the technology to do stuff a certain way, then you don't have to think about ways to do it without the technology. And so to say, how could they have done that without experiencing life without that stuff, then you, you don't know what ways you would have come up with stuff. And that always, damn history channel. Sorry. Into the voids. And then the Great Hawk will be built on top of it. I love humans. We often think we're clever, don't we, of the modern age? Yes. But when I was told how this was actually built, wow. I'm not saying that we're less clever now, by the way. I think if we didn't have the tools we have today, we would find strange ways to do it. All right. So we're going to leave the kitchens. Ranto. And we're going to go up into the Great Hall. Mind the steps as you come up. They're always uneven. Here we are in the Great Hall. There's not- Oh, great. I got to pee quick, guys. I will be right back. Okay. Sorry. All right. Continue. Great Hall. There's not much left of it. Great Hall. Much of it was destroyed during the Civil War. They weren't that big, these Great Halls. They were just big enough to have your food, your feast. But many of your soldiers would rough it in here. And it's quite misleading because it, during the Victorian times, oh, they pulled it. a lot of this down to make it look more like a ruin. But oh. the way into this part of the <laughs> castle is over here. I the love way... this guy's... But oh. the way into this part of the castle was over here. Okay. Yeah. This was the front door. To get into the Great Hall, you had to come into a tower which has now gone. There were... Uh, Port Carles, there were drawbridges, all have disappeared. And then come back here and let's see if we can show you. The so I was with my old friend Andrew, right? Uh, all his life devoted to these castles. And I says to him, this room was all locked up. And I said, why don't we open it? Why don't we clear it out? And he put the suggestion forward and they did. They emptied it out, built the steps. It was wonderful because we needed a home for the original doors. But when they'd done it, I'm in here, you know, waiting for my school kids to arrive. And I'm looking up and I saw two ghostly shapes on the wall. Can you see the two shields? Hmm? I just see like a, a, oh, is that one? Right there. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I see them. I see them. One, Those two. two shields are set in the original plaster. 
those seven, eight hundred years old? It's incredible, isn't it? We've never been able to identify them, but we know Mr. and Mrs., somebody arriving, maybe their shields will be up there. Who knows? But look at this. This original. is the original Chepstow Castle doors. Then you can see you have your cross bracing. Yeah. Lattice. This is your great put lug to lock it. And here is the wicket gate. This is your daily gate. Yeah, you keep this open. And what I used to get the, the school children to do. Very small. And this is giving me a bit of a thrill, right? You put your thumb here and you draw this bolt back. This bolt here has actually worn through where countless thumbs have actually opened and closed it. That is so awesome. Just having his thumb right there, I would love to put my hand on that thing. The step worn so much it's been replaced in the ancient days. This, to me, is a marvel. And I can reach around the front and there are still parts of iron plates on it. Why'd they put iron on doors facing out of a castle? Makes them heavy. Why'd they do it? Do you guys ever, like, like when you're a kid, like, can you see, like, old black and white footage? And you almost, like, think, like, it's black and white back then. Like, it's hard to picture something. Like, that, that, that was a, an amazing transformation, like, trans, trans, transportation back into time. Just that little, the fact that that's so worn down just from people using it. And the thumb and... It, it's, it's weird to think that, like, people saw the world just like we do. And they walked around just like we do, and I, I just think that's really cool. I'm going to leave you to ponder. Let me know in the comments why you think castle doors were shod in iron. Wait. Let's go and have a look at the Earl's Chamber. The look, maybe? So here we are in the Earl's Chamber. Up until the 1950s, people actually lived here the custodians of the castle. But it's been put back just to show you what a medieval room was like. But actually, some years ago, they refurbished it and tried to make it look as it did in the day of the earls, the ancient knights. But when they put the new roof on, they were told by an old workman here, great guy, don't do it like that. Now, he had been a stonemason all his life and he was now in his late 60s, early 70s, and he says, that will leak. And they dismissed him. And he says, you watch, Kevin, that'll leak. And sure enough, it leaked so badly, this room was closed down for years. And it's a shame, because he's now dead and gone, and his secrets, many of them have gone with him. So you imagine, this is your medieval fireplace, fire roaring there in the winter, warming this whole room up. They certainly lived in more comfort than you'd think. Castles weren't quite as cold as you would think. So we're in the lower bailey of the castle. This is the youngest part of the castle. This guy is phenomenal. You see uh, Martin's tour tower guy. there. That's Tudor, a lot of Tudor work in there. Uh, there would have been like a little town in here. This would have had all your smiths. People would have lived in their little shacks. And in fact, there's a piece that I know about. Let me show you, come over here. So I used to bring my school groups up here, all my children and students, yeah? And I'd say, fireplace. And they'd all go into the fireplace. And I'd say, why is there a fireplace up there? And they'd be going, ooh, mmm, ooh, uh, ooh. And they just couldn't figure out. I don't know why we had two fireplaces and then I'd show them there's a stairway up there any ideas I said look around for clues well they didn't realize you can actually see the remains of part of it a staircase this was a house one of your black and white timber houses all the way across here this is the middle of it 
the other side is out the back in the next bailey. So it's like a bit of a Tudor mansion that stood here. All wood and thatch and that kind of stuff. Which I think is just wow. Oh, but there's okay. a trick so here. That's the only thing left. Okay. You imagine the enemy capture this part of the castle. All right? They come streaming over the walls and you retreat into the middle bailey. Let me show you the trap. Try and follow me. Here, it's a blind. As you come round here, it's a trap. If you look behind you, men on the battlements can still shoot at you. Even the doors, you could shoot through them. We've got some of the original doors here. Look at these old doors. Musket loops cutting them from the Civil War. There was also a building above your head, long gone, that had your murder holes. And then the tower, when the castle became peaceful, was converted to a bakery. Kitchen and a bakery in here. And I'll have you know, I've actually baked bread in here. But interesting, this will be sealed up. When you opened it, all the smoke went up this chimney and came out halfway up this chimney. So this was a kitchen, but originally this was the front of the castle. Before they extended the castle down, this was one of your front defensive towers. So there were no doors either side. Let's go through the door, have a look at the middle bailey. So we're in the middle bailey, but when it fell out of use, it was the front part of the castle that that was the living quarters, if you like. This had lots of defense things and you would have had workshops here. But the most interesting thing is the Great Tower, the first stone built castle in Britain. So this is where I actually shot the incendiary arrow down into the far corner there, if you've seen it on one of my previous videos. But this I gotta see that. is the Great Tower. And a lot of the red stone that you see He's actually Roman. As I pointed out, this tower was built so quickly because they used so much Roman stone. Let's have a look inside. This never used to be here. This has all been put later in the medieval times, all part of the defense. And these steps didn't exist. It, it must have been so crazy to, to live like the Roman Empire, for example, seems to be one of the few examples that I can think of. Of like, after the Roman Empire fell, there were generations who were less advanced than their previous generations. Is that right? And I feel like that's, that's just like such a weird, strange thing to happen. If you wanted to get into the Great Tower, you had to go up wooden steps, across a drawbridge, all on a wooden frame. And that would be knocked down if they were under attack. It's called the Great Tower because it's not a keep, right? It is the Great Tower. This is the entranceway here. You turn left as you came in, that took you up the stairs, which brought you out up there. Look at the size of the put lugs, the holes yeah. for the beams. The main chamber was upstairs. We're in the, sh in the cellars and it's built on solid rock. It's not, it doesn't have foundations because it is actually on the cliff. This is one of the reasons they could build it so quickly because literally straight onto the stone, an incredible arch went across here. It must have been, wow. But it's downfall was the fact- I wonder how people like learned that stuff. It's like, did, did they, it must have built something way back when on like not great soil and it probably just like sank in and caved in over time. The fact that it was too big. But William Marshall himself would have been in here. This was one of his favorite places. The top of the little niche is there. When the sun shines on it, you can still see some of the original paint. They were just crosses, but it was original paint. And there are still some of the old things left here that people miss. Finials and a king's head or two. 
And that shows you that this was a one, two, three, four story building. Well, the other little secret in this incredible tower is the secret doorway up there. Goes behind the screen and up onto the battlements. So here we are at the original end of the castle. The great tower behind you, then the original back gate. Let's have a little look. A lovely old yew tree here. So this is the original back door. These have been preserved. They have musket loops in them. There was a drawbridge here, a massive drawbridge. This is the false castle at the back of Chepstow Castle. This is for nothing but defense. This is for soldiers. This is for the false. It's, it's not that far down right there. I'd imagine that wasn't there. Like uh, you could kind of just like jump or I don't know. At the back, this is for soldiers. And look at the commanding view you have of the River Wye. So this, as I said, was one of the towers at the back of the castle. This is actually accommodation, uh, accommodation for the ladies, so I understand. But if you have a look through this loop here, you can see along the castle. It gives you a commanding view. You can enfilade anybody coming up the hill. Or and if we have a look around the, the corner wall. through a musket loop. So this is a musket loop from the 17th century, from what it was called the English Civil War. It gives you quite a view. You imagine two or three musketeers on each loop. Yeah, they got plenty of scope to shoot. Obviously, they have to be thin, you know, not very wide, so that it's more difficult to shoot back at you. But it seems like you're very limited into how much you can aim laterally. So what we have on the top here, that's what the castle used to look like. It had proper castellation. So... Uh, all changed for when they had guns. So we've seen the inside of the castle. We've done the tour. Now we're going to go outside and see the outside of the side of the castle. Changed for when they had guns. So uh, all changed for when they had guns. What does he mean by that? Like, like you you couldn't have these with gun. Uh... So we've seen the inside of the castle, we've done the tour, now we're going to go outside and see the outside of the castle. You'll be amazed at what's still there. Is that like a golf course country club? Oh my god, the grass. I love good grass. This is a favorite part of uh, Chapstow Castle for me. So guys, like, uh, of the day, like, when this was in its prime, was this, like, the castle? Like, this was the best one of the, of the time? This is where a battle actually took place, 25th of May, 1648. You can see musket loops at the top of the curtain wall that's still left standing. But over here, to the right of it, you can see there are buttresses holding up the wall. You can see it, it really does look unstable. And that's because... Uh, just before the attack, Oliver Cromwell's artillery, which had been brought down from the siege of Gloucester, fired straight at the base of the wall and brought the whole thing down. Now, when the parliamentarian troops charged across here, they were under fire from that tower, this tower, and then yet another tower over there. So once the castle was taken, they rebuilt the wall and they put a artillery piece inside the wall you can't see it now it's all been bricked up and they put cannons on top of these towers that were on a, a revolving uh, platform so they could actually be moved around but these uh, musket loops here that you can see in front of you they're quite rare uh, to be so purposely made we're going to move up and you'll see uh, some more of the castle it's quite amazing really you know you can see the other musket loops were more kind of makeshift so yeah, we're looking at all of this means. that was damaged in the civil war this is all actually an extension of the castle yeah the original part of the castle we haven't even got to it yet 
there is so much of this and it's difficult to hit because Chepstow Castle you'll see is actually very narrow so to drop arrows or to drop shot inside it can be quite difficult and of course as you move up you sense. come under fire or come under shot from so many different towers it's one of the best defensive positions I've ever found so we've got the remains of the medieval curtain wall unfortunately because after the Civil War these places were slighted they were reduced so they couldn't be used uh, against Parliament again but this is where we get into the original part of the castle thousand years of history here this is the earliest part of the castle behind me what they call the Great Tower and it was the first stone-built castle in Britain it was uh, commissioned on the orders of William the Conqueror so that's 1067 he commissioned and uh, they used stone from a local Roman ruins here there's a Roman town at Cowent and Caelian and they robbed lots of the stone so every now and again you can spot a piece of Roman stonework and what you have cool. behind it extra is extra treat every now and then within the treat yet another extension the rear of the castle finishes just there people think it goes on and there's all this around it but that's a trick right it's an after castle the back bit is for nothing but defense for killing the castle officially finishes where that tower is there and it was accommodation for the ladies yeah and it was very good accommodation too here we are at the rear entrance of the castle and it's amazing because there used to be a giant drawbridge that came across all of here then three portcullis gates inside but this is a castle around the back door you can smash away at this you can try and get in but once you get in there's another drawbridge and another set of doors just to get into the castle this it's almost like the forgotten part of the castle come and have a look it's did someone graffiti original almost like the stuff the forgotten part of the castle come and have a look just how high up on a cliff chepstow castle is you cannot be attacked from the eastern side that is the river Y. it's at low tide at the moment at high tide you can get ships up here yeah in fact up until the 1920s coal ships used to come up and turn around small ships but in the medieval times there was a full harbor here chepstow castle was supplied by ships this nowadays is called the gateway to wales back in the medieval times it was actually the entrance to a hostile territory just one more thing before we go around to the front this is an arrow slit this is an original arrow slit it's not been repaired but I'm going to show you what they look like we have a repaired one just round the corner so this is a, a refurbished rebuilt arrow slit very very narrow on the inside barely two fingers wide what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Julie my camera person to actually just back down because this is where there is a secret to the castle right I'm going to overtake you this is the postern gate this is the escape the way out for spies for sneak attacks for all of that kind of stuff there was some kind of structure in front of it you can see some of the remains of, of what used to be here and it concealed the postern gate the secret way in and out of the castle this is how the spies got in how the spies got out so I hope you enjoyed our little tour of Chepstow Castle my favorite castle in the world if you did thumbs up if you're a subscriber hey thanks a million if you're not subscribe yeah ding that proverbial bell and of course a special shout out now to all my patreon members thanks guys and if you want to become a member of our patreon community then there is a link in the description thank you very much digging up Anne Boleyn hi my name's Kevin uh, awesome awesome video phenomenal that guy was great awesome channel and cool castle for sure I love learning about castles they're fascinating um yeah this is early in the morning so I'm still getting awake I gotta make me some coffee yeah hope you're all doing well chin up if not you'll be good soon bye guys